what's going on YouTube. So the NX just joined the Lexus lineup back in 2015, but in the time since, it quickly established itself as one of the best selling products in the lucrative compact luxury SUV segment. But now it's time for the second act with this completely new and even more competitive NX. We've spent the last week extensively testing out this next generation Lexus product, and today we're gonna find out if this is the real deal. All right, so the most obvious place to start off with is the exterior because this is a very, very eye-catching exterior design. First of all, you better like red because this, poo, this is called the red line paint and it is very, very vivid, especially when you have it in contrast with the finishes that the F-Sport trim level gives you. So of course, all the NXs are gonna come with the signature spindle grill. It's not that much different from the last generation model, but with the F-Sport Duty, you have the more aggressive black mesh the gloss black trim that goes all around it. And additionally, all of these lower elements are made to look more aggressive, which they do their job very well in that regard. Additionally, another very aggressive element is these brand new LED headlights. So you're gonna have full LED headlights across every version of the NX with this new generation model. However, what we have on this example are the signature Lexus optional triple beam headlights. So you have the crystal design like so, you have the LED turn signal across the top, and then you have the latest version of their Arrowhead daytime running light. Additionally, it's gonna throw in the uh, headlamp washers, and you also have cornering lamps, which are located down here next to our standard LED fog lamps. Now, some of the versions of the NX do come with 18 inch alloys, but as you'd expect for this F-Sport handling model, we jump straight to the really nice 20 inch alloys. Just like with many of the other exterior elements, we have a matching gloss black finish, which I think looks very nice. Of course, the other models, you can get contrast alloy wheels if you prefer that kind of look. You have your F-Sport branding as well. And then once again, another nice gloss black element on the mirror for this F-Sport model. Chrome accent, LED turn signal indicator, and one of the nice features about the NX is that all the models come with the fully loaded mirror setup. So you have blind spot monitoring, you have heating, you have power folding, and we also have driver side auto dimming. Now, as you probably realize by now, this Lexus NX is a very aggressive looking vehicle on the outside, especially with this very vivid red paint color. Now, as far as some of the design elements and overall length figures for this model, it's coming in at 183 and a half inches in overall length, which does make, make it a little bit shorter than some of its rivals like the Acura RDX, uh, but not by a lot, of course, they do have that Bigger Brother RX in their lineup. Now, as far as some F-Sport exclusive features here at the side, this piece right here is going to be body color. That gives it a little bit more of a sporty look as opposed to a rugged look with the matte black plastic that the other models will have. I really love the door handle design where they put some of the black accenting on it as well. We have smoked window surrounds and then a black uh, roof rail up here at the top. So certainly a pretty aggressive looking vehicle at the side. And then coming around to the rear design, Lexus has also done a really fantastic job with designing the way this vehicle looks. This is one of the first Lexus models to have their newest rear design. And of course, it is something that we've seen on the new LX600 as well. So let's break down some of those design elements. First of all, we do have an exposed rear wiper back here. And then if we drop down below that, we do have our Lexus branding right here. That's one of those signature design elements that we're seeing on the newer Lexus products. The taillights themselves are going to be full length LED taillights and they are gorgeous LED taillights. They have a lot of three dimensional design elements going on. And like I mentioned, they are full LED. So you have an amber LED turn signal. You have all of the LED accenting as well as a LED brake light and reverse light. Now, if we drop down to the lower area, you will notice for this F-Sport, we do have a little bit of black matte plastic for the lower moldings. We also have a revised rear diffuser for the F-Sport duty to make it more aggressive. However, oddly enough, you are not going to have exposed exhaust outlets on any of the models. And as far as the tow rating, if you're curious about that, we're looking at a 2,000 pound maximum with the optional tow package that this model has. 
Now, as far as your safety systems and warranty information for the NX, Lexus has done a fantastic job, especially with the safety systems for this model, because they're going to be standard on every single model. And it's not just normal safety systems, it's their newest Lexus Safety Suite 3.0 system, which is their most advanced system on any model. Now the new features for that 3.0 system are the curve management for adaptive cruise as well as auto braking to avoid turning into oncoming traffic or pedestrians. And that of, is of course in addition to what they throw in standard on all the other Lexus models like adaptive cruise control, auto high beams, forward emergency braking, as well as lane keeping assist. Now as far as your warranty information is concerned, you are going to have Lexus's signature warranty, which is a 4-year 50,000 mile basic warranty, 6-year 70,000 mile powertrain warranty, and you do also get complimentary maintenance as well. Well guys, this NX is super bold on the outside, and it also has a red interior as well. So let's go ahead and check that out, see what tech they've thrown in before we take it out in a spin. Walking up to the NX, we do have their smart entry system, as you'd expect, and the brand's typical key fob. Um, this specific model does have the optional digital key system as well, and you can remote start from the Lexus app. Now coming up to the door handle, one of the interesting things about this new NX is the fact that this door handle doesn't actually move itself. Behind it, there is a touchpad. When you press into it, it does unlock the door and fold the mirrors out, and then that's how you open it up. As you can see, we do have the red interior, which is pretty rare to have a red exterior and interior, but let's go ahead and get inside here. So of course we have a radically new interior for this new generation of the NX. Before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about your different interior material and color selections. Obviously there are going to be quite a few. Um, your 250 and 350 models are going to come standard with the new Lux Leatherette. If you go for the luxury models, you're going to have uh, Palomino leather, um, but we of course have the F-Sport model. When you choose the F-Sport model, regardless of whether you have the luxury or not, you will have a new Lux leather with the special heavily bolstered F-Sport seats. So as you can see, really nice thick bolsters. I love the color contrast design on these. Lexus always has done a phenomenal design the job with the design of their seats excuse me and this is no exception as you can see the color contrast runs down the side as well as the bolsters and you do have s sport up there in the headrest additionally this is the new lux leatherette but it feels very realistic in terms of the seat adjustments themselves they are eight-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support let's turn on over here to the door trim and take a look at the materials in this cabin so as you can see, we do have the red leather that runs across the armrest area. Uh, being that it has an electronic door handle, you do just push this to open the door. I want to go ahead and point that out. Above that, we do have the leather with the color contrast stitching. It's going to be soft touch plastic along the top. And then we have this section of real aluminum and a kind of pebble design for the Mark Levinson sound system, but this is not metal. Looking down below, we do have the aluminum pedals. And on the upper dash, Pretty much the entire thing is going to be finished in a soft touch plastic, including all of this area over here. So I definitely would have liked to see some more aluminum or stitching details, something a little bit more fancy over here on the main part of the dashboard. But as we move down, we've got some piano black trim. We have a nice leatherette that wraps around through there to rest your knee against. And then of course, everything does fit together exceptionally well. This is a Lexus after all. Now to start it up, you have the button up here, nice and visible. Now somewhat surprisingly, when you fire up the vehicle, you will not be greeted with a full digital gauge cluster, but it is a mostly digital gauge cluster. So in the middle here, we do have a seven inch display. You can reconfigure this to a variety of different designs over in the uh, main display. So I'm just kind of clicking through a few examples. These do also change uh, when you change the drive mode as well. Um, however, really a lot of the information that you're going to want to see is actually located up here in your head-up display. This is a really large and really vivid head-up display and 
Basically, on both sides of the steering wheel, you have some touch sensitive buttons. And these control a lot of different functions inside of the head-up display. So for example, you can uh, click on these buttons right here. You can go and do your audio controls. And then on the opposite side, I can click on this side. We can do cruise controls and safety systems, different types of functions like that. And you can even adjust the head-up display right in the steering wheel itself. So really, this is a great head-up display, very rich of information, especially when you're driving, have things like your blind spot monitoring, safety system updates. So uh, really impressed by this head-up display. Now, as we pull back to the steering wheel, of course, we have the latest Lexus design. It's a nice and thick feeling steering wheel, really nicely padded. You have the color contrast stitching, of course, F-Sport branding, perforated leather, and then being the F-Sport, you do have the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. We are gonna find rain sensing wipers on board and in terms of the wheel itself, it is power adjusting pretty much on every Lexus NX except for the base model. We also have the optional heating in the cold weather package. All right, so as a family crossover, let's go ahead and discuss the interior storage. So first turning over here to our console, just like with other Lexus products, it does open up from both sides. And then looking inside the storage itself, we have plenty of it. Uh, we have a nice felt lining across the top and the bottom of it. And in terms of our storage, we can fit the coupons in here without even folding them. So there's definitely plenty of space and more storage than quite a number of the German competition. For example, the Audi Q5. Now in front of that, we do have two cup holders. We have another storage area. This is a wireless phone charging pad, optional on this model. We have a tiny shelf right there, two USB ports, and then you can slide this back. And this is going to reveal another nicely felt lined bin, pretty deep actually, and it does have a 12 volt outlet inside. Now, of course, one of the ways that they've saved space is by switching to an electronic shifter. So you now have this kind of small nub shaped shifter, nicely leather wrapped, but the operation of this is a little challenging. So like with the Lexus LC, you actually have to bump to the left and then pull back for drive, bump to the left and pull forward for reverse. So instead of pulling straight back, um, this is a little challenging to get used to, honestly, in day-to-day -day living. For example, if you're making a quick maneuver, you back up real fast and then you just, without thinking, pull back. Well, now you're in neutral, you're not in drive. So you're not going anywhere. You're gonna be stuck out in the road or whatever. I definitely wish they would revise the uh, operation of this shifter. But coming back to this, Obviously, like I said, pull back to D for drive, bump down once more, that's gonna give you manual mode and you can shift with the paddle shifters. And then heading into reverse, uh, we do have the optional panoramic view 360 degree camera system on board in this example. Really nice 360 camera. Obviously it is humongous on this large display. You have some views that you can switch between and one of the interesting features that I really like about this is as I back up, watch what happens to the car. As you can see, it's turning translucent and you can actually see what's underneath the car. So if that was the parking lines or something like that, it really is helpful in everyday living. And then for P, you just, or for park, you're just gonna press the P, excuse me. And just like with other Lexus and Toyota products, the electronic parking brake does automatically engage. Right here is your auto brake hold as well. And this button right here will turn on and off your auto start stop system. Now moving on up the dashboard, you do have a prominent drive mode controller. We'll go through some of these drive modes in the test drive in just a second. We also have a button here for our 360 camera. Uh, I do want to point this out. You do have this panoramic spin view, which is a pretty cool touch. Now, as far as the rest of the dashboard here, it's strongly angled towards the driver, of course. And before we get into the very important aspect of this mega display, let's go ahead and sample the audio system, which does have a very nice physical volume knob. I'm sure you guys are glad to see that. Um, so what it is, is a standard 10 speaker sound system. However, this model does have the optional 17 speaker Mark Levinson sound system. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a sample right now. So 
So as you'd expect, overall sound quality of this system is very nice. Uh, Mark Levinson, of course, is known for having very nice sounding sound systems, and this is definitely a big improvement over that standard 10 speaker sound system. Okay, so let's not avoid it any longer. Let's talk this display. Of course, we have a gigantic 14 inch display on this model since we have the F Sport with the luxury package. Standard on the F Sport is going to be the 9.8 inch display. It's going to have similar arrangement to this. Obviously, you're going to have thicker bezels, and one of the things is that the climate controls are going to be separated out, whereas, you, as you can see, they're integrated in very nicely into this display. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, I'm a big sucker for this type of detailing. We saw some cars like the Mach-E have this. As you can see, this uh, dial to adjust your temperature and the standard dual zone automatic climate control system is integrated inside of the display itself and looks very nice. Some of your other controls like your fan speeds and uh, zones are gonna be located in the bottom section of the display. You have additional climate functions located right there. And then of course we have our controls for our heated and ventilated seats. Heated seats are gonna be standard on every version of the NX. The ventilated seats are part of the F-Sport luxury package. Uh, both of them are automatic as well as the heated steering wheel. So you really don't have to touch this or fool with this. Uh, the climate we found over the last week is very, very good at predicting what combination of vent and seat and steering wheel you need to actually achieve this feeling of 72 degrees. Lexus does this better than anyone else. All right, and now the main 14 inch display. So right now what I'm in is the Android Auto system. It is running wirelessly. Of course, you do also have wireless Apple CarPlay as well. Uh, that's true if you have the smaller display. Um, so you don't have to have the 14 inch display if you want wireless Android Auto or wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, this is just a gigantic improvement over anything Lexus has offered in the past. It's really a night and day change. As you can see, the main thing is the fact that I'm touching it. There's no uh, control knob down here. There's nothing like that. This is a full touch uh, screen. You don't have any types of dials or anything. And I'm very appreciative of that. That just makes it a lot easier. It's well within reach. And in terms of the main or the main system itself, uh, this is an all new interface. It is designed in the United States to our American taste. And as you can see, it is extremely responsive. Everything loads very quickly. And overall, it's just been a great uh, joy to use this over the last week. More or less, if I had to sum this up without blabbing all day, it's that this went from one of the worst uh, infotainment systems in the business to one of the best. It's nice and simple, but has plenty of features. Now, as we rise on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror with our Homelink Universal Remotes built into it. Got a nice sunglass holder built in. Nice LED lighting, which is touch sensitive. And then finally wrapping up the front of the cabin here. As you can see, this model does have the panoramic sunroof. Um, you do have the option of two different sunroofs. You can actually get a less expensive standard single panel or for $1,600, you can get this dual panel setup. Now the Lexus NX is a family luxury SUV, so the rear area is of course going to be pretty important to any buyer buying within this segment. And I'm happy to say this NX is going to have quite a bit of luxury. It's also gonna have a good amount of space for the segment as well. We're looking at 36.1 inches of rear legroom, 38 and a half inches of rear headroom, which I do say is a good amount of space for the segment, but it is still a lot less than the Acura RDX Audi Q5. Um, it does lag behind a few of the rivals, but as you can see, I'm five foot nine, Drew's five foot eight, and this is his sitting position. We still have plenty of space, so I don't think you're gonna have any space issues in general with the NX. And also the headroom is pretty impressive, especially for having the panoramic moonroof as well. Now let's turn our attention towards the features. Here in the center, we are gonna have vents as you would expect out of a luxury vehicle. One of the things I do wanna point out though is that you're not gonna have your own climate controls unlike some of the German rivals would offer. If we drop down below that, we have a 12 volt outlet. We also have two USB type C charging ports, which is a nice touch to keep everything charged up. In the back of the seat backs, we do have this nice little storage pocket. If we fold down this center console area, you will notice we have a nice armrest two cup holders inside of here and then let's take a look at the door trim for the back 
As you would expect with the luxury car, the top part is going to still be padded plastic. We do have some nice leatherette trim with some red stitching in the middle, a red armrest, and overall it's gonna be a pretty nice area. We have some bottle storage down in the bottom. I also wanna point out that heated rear seats are available on the NX. They're not on this particular model though. Now coming up to the tailgate area, as you would expect, you do have a power hands-free one that is included with the luxury package on this F-Sport model. Um, a power door is actually optional on the NX, so you can actually get a manual door if you go for one of the very base models. But in order to open this hands-free version, just wave your foot under the bumper and open it up. As you can see, it does work quite well. All right, and as far as the space is concerned in the rear area of the Lexus NX, we're looking at a cargo capacity of 22.7 cubic feet. Behind the second row seats, if we fold those seats down, we're looking at over 46 cubic feet of cargo capacity. So as far as those numbers and how they compare to the competition, this is one of the smallest offerings in the segment in terms of the cargo capacity. Stuff like the Audi Q5 is gonna be coming in around 54 cubic feet, as well as the RDX. So you're look, looking at about nine to 10 cubic feet less than some of its main rivals. However, of course, Lexus does have to make room for that bigger brother Lexus RX model, whereas the Germans don't have to. Now, as far as the space back here, We'll start by folding the seats. They are 60-40 split folding, and you'll actually notice that we do not have handles in the cargo area, so you will have to fold them up in the second row. So that's an interesting touch by Lexus. And then we off to the left side, we have a 12 volt power outlet. We're also gonna have some netting here. Here's our cargo cover. And then if we lift up the cargo floor, you will notice we have actually a lot of space up under here. So if that 46 cubic feet is not enough, you can definitely fit some more stuff down in this area. Then if we further lift that up, there's even more space back there that's actually compartmentalized. So you can store pretty much anything you're gonna need under the floor. And I did forget to mention back in the cargo department, you can get the electrically folding release mechanism for the second row, but you do have to have the optional heated rear seats for that feature. Now, as far as this passenger seat itself, we're looking at a power passenger seat that is, of course, as you would expect out of a luxury car. That is actually going to be standard equipment, though. And then opening up the glove box, we do have a smaller stack of coupons than we did before. We lost a few of them, unfortunately. But they do fit in there perfectly fine. There's no issues whatsoever. We're also going to have a really nice felt lining. Um, and I assume this glove box is also illuminated. Now, up top, we do have a sun visor. We have some LED illumination for the visor. We also have a mirror. And we can detach it as well as extend it out. miles per hour in the NX350. So what we have on board with this is a new engine. So previously we used to have that 2 liter turbo. Now we have a 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder with this model. Uh, 275 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque. Yeah. So it's making <coughs> pretty good numbers. The 0 to 60 is not overwhelmingly fast though. 6.6 yeah. um, yeah, seconds. Lexus rates it at 6.6. Uh, for this 350 model. Now, of course, there are other powertrain options, but you know, that is a decent 0 to 60. It's not going to like smoke anyone sitting at a red light, but that is pretty good, healthy figures. It is actually faster than the previous generation NX. So maybe if you're coming from one of those, it is going to be a little bit faster and you're going to have a little bit more power on tap. Now, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna yeah, say go with, the, uh, <laughs> with the previous generation, you didn't have a lower engine tier, but this year you do have this lower engine tier and the 250, that's gonna be a naturally aspirated two and a half liter four cylinder and that's got a 203 horsepower. So it's gonna be substantially faster than that if you are you know, deciding if you want the 250 or the 350. Yeah. And then of course, they're gonna be hybrid and plug-in offerings available as well, which we will cover in separate videos. Uh, 250 as an 8.2 seconds, 0 to 60. Yeah, I mean, you can't say that it's bad acceleration. That being said, 
you know, the German competition, their standard engines are definitely quicker than this. They're usually in the uh, below six seconds range, and this is closer to seven seconds. Yeah. The torque figure, though, definitely pushes you back in your seat. Having almost 320 pound feet of torque is quite a lot. And uh, one thing, since he was talking about those German rivals, we'll go ahead and knock this out of the gate. I will say that this engine is going to be a little bit louder and a little less refined than the German competition. Those models have those two liter turbo four cylinders, some of the smoothest engines that money can buy. This is not gonna be quite that quiet, so especially like upon a cold start or something, it's gonna be a little bit louder, less refined, less luxurious sounding. And I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, transmission. So we do have an eight-speed automatic transmission aboard like many of the other Lexus and Toyota products. Overall, it's pretty good. Um, I will say there's a little bit of a kind of hesitation or a space between the shifts some of the times, so it can feel a little bit um, hesitant, I guess is the word I'm looking for during some situations, but it is mostly responsive when you put your foot down. After just a second, you are gonna get that extra power you need. We're in the normal mode right now, which most people will drive around in. Obviously, it's gonna get a little bit more aggressive when we take things into the sport mode and stuff like that. Uh, now, let's go ahead and talk about our ride quality, though, now that we're just cruising here at 55 miles per hour. Um, that is one of the really good elements about this Lexus NX. It continues to be a very comfortable offering within the segment. We're about to go over a bump here and it does soak that up really quite well despite having the larger wheels for this F-Sport model. It is worth noting that this particular model does have the adaptive dampers as well so that further enhances that uh, experience on road as well as you know, in terms of the sporty dynamics. So it's nice to have those adaptive dampers thrown in. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get a sound level reading here and see what it's gonna test at. looking at 54.5 decibels, which that is a good reading. Um, we test a lot of cars on this loop because this is closer to our house. And um, as far as the noise level, that is right on par with what the competitive set does have. I think 54 is around average. It is actually louder than the Lexus UX that we tested actually just last week, which came in at 53 decibels. So I hear a little bit more wind noise maybe because it's sitting up a little taller. Now, I do want to go ahead and talk about the drivetrains, of course. Front wheel drive is going to be standard equipment on the NX. However, it is worth noting that if you go for the 350 model, all wheel drive is standard. So you have the option between front wheel drive or all wheel drive with the 250 model. Not No option for that on the 350, so it's going to be all wheel drive exclusive. So as far as the fuel economy is concerned with that, we're looking at 28 miles a gallon combined for the 250 front wheel drive. The 250 all-wheel drive is also coming in at 28 combined, and then the 350 drops down to 25 miles a gallon combined with the standard all-wheel drive. And it is worth noting that's one of the best fuel economies within the entire segment, which is particularly worth noting because a lot in the segment have mild hybrids, and this is just a regular uh, turbo four-cylinder, um, so it's pretty impressive that Lexus is able to achieve those fuel economy figures. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into sport mode actually we'll go ahead and do sport plus mode because why not why we're going to get on a country road here and test this out this is known as f sport handling this year um, so is this a better handler than last year let's take it for a test here <laughs> it feels quicker in sport plus mode. yeah for sure <laughs> Definitely enhances the throttle response. The transmission does shift faster now. We have the paddle shifters on board, uh, which I did try out last night. Pretty good, they're very responsive. They don't ignore you or override you. But yeah, so now we're out here on the country road. You can tell that things have tightened up. That's one of the characteristics, of course, of having the adaptive dampers is the adaptability of it. Um, but you know, this overall is not a incredibly sporty vehicle. You're not going hardcore when you go for F-Sport handling. 
it's still like Mason was mentioning is very important that it keeps those Lexus characteristics so yeah. because of that they tighten things down a little bit but it's not tightened to the point that diminishes the ride quality so we'll kind of go into this corner here and check the body Yeah, so you definitely still have the presence of body roll. This is definitely not as sporty as, you know, some of the German vehicles. But all in all, this is definitely still going to be able to hustle. Yeah. Yeah, the steering particularly, when you go into the Sport Plus mode, I'm much more satisfied with this. It feels a lot more responsive. When you're in the normal mode, it's really light, which is good for that, you know, typical Lexus clientele. But when you put it in the sport mode, we definitely have a lot more response, which is really nice. Yeah. All right, guys, though, so you know what time it is. It's air ball and slam dunk time. Um, I'll kick us off with the slam dunk and just say that we really like the exterior design. We also posted a picture on Instagram with this NX as soon as we got it, and it got really positive reception so I think we're not in the minority here I, this look at this looks really really good I like the paint color it's bold um, this interior design is cool as well so I think just the overall design elements that Lexus has gone with really stand out in this segment where you're looking at something like an Audi Q5 where it's very bland and boring so I like the style injected in and Mason mentioned the interior that's actually going to be our air ball not the design but just kind of a so the selection of materials. Yeah. Um, I kind of talked about it briefly in the interior section, but it doesn't feel incredibly upscale or premium inside of this cabin. And I have a feeling that's because Lexus is feeling like they need to save something for the RX, especially the new generation, yeah. which is going to be coming out relatively soon. But I do wish they would have injected a little bit more luxury in here, more real aluminum, more wood, stuff stitching like that, some details. stitching details. Yeah, yeah. it just kind of strikes you as not incredibly more luxurious than just like a regular version or like what this is based off of the RAV4. All right, guys, though, let's talk about the pricing because, of course, the NX, one of its strongest elements and one of the reasons it has sold so well is that it is a little cheaper than the German competition and it does fit in its little niche. So we're looking at a starting price of 37950 for the 250 front wheel drive. And then if you go up to the 350F Sport, what we have today, that's going to start at 46650 now, this particular tester is pretty much fully loaded for the F-Sport duty. Um, we have almost every single package, plus the $1,075 destination brings this tester to $55,325. And there's our auto start stop system at work. It is pretty nice and smooth. You can, of course, turn it off if you don't like it. But overall, uh, we have to say this new generation of the Lexus NX really feels like a big step forward for the NX brand. Um, this new generation, I think, kept the strong characteristics that have made the NX such a popular vehicle in the segment, which namely is having that really aggressive, bold Lexus design, a lot of those good Lexus characteristics that people are used to having. Um, but now we have technology uh, that particularly technology that uh, is really big improvement. We also have a big plethora of uh, engine and powertrain options. So all in all, it's definitely, for us, it seems like an obvious step forward. And I think especially owners of the previous generation NX are really going to enjoy this upgrade. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching our in-depth review of the all new 2022 Lexus NX 350F Sport. If you made it this far in our video, I hope that means you enjoyed watching or found something in this video helpful. And if you did, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. It helps us to get cooler content to you all faster. And it really just creates a whole circular mechanism of us being able to provide better content to you if you subscribe. And I promise you won't want to miss out on any of the automotive news that we're going to have on our channel. Also, follow us on TikTok and Instagram for other forms of content, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.